This is all about triangles. It's about triangular numbers. So a triangular number is a number that I could make into a triangle if I use these tokens. So something like a three would be a triangular number because I could make a little triangle out of it. Or I could have a number like six because six tokens can make a little triangle as well. Or I could have the number 10 because 10 tokens like this would make a triangle as well. 15 would be the next one and 21 is the next one. Or I could run that pattern backwards uh, because one counts as a triangular number two. It doesn't look like a triangle, but it does count. So we have this sequence of triangular numbers. Do you know who else loved triangular numbers? Gauss. And Euler. Ga oh, they all loved them. They all loved them. But Gauss famously loved triangular numbers. Gauss was so excited about proving his triangular theorem. We know he was excited because he wrote about it in his diary. And we've got his diary to show you. Eureka, he says in Greek. Num, if you can read that bit faint, num equals triangle plus triangle plus triangle. So every number can be written as three triangles. I mean, I'm mainly telling you this story because I love this diary entry, right? This is an acute way of saying the same thing. It's an acute triangle, is that anything? I don't know. So this is a lovely way of writing the same thing. So it's kind of fun. So every number can be written as a sum of triangular numbers. In fact, every number can be written as a sum of at most three triangular numbers. Uh, so shall we see this in action? If we had a number like 15, right? 15 is a triangular number. So it only takes one triangle, right? That's fine, okay? We're allowed one triangle. So 15, one triangle. But a number like 16 needs two triangles. So it could be 15 and a one. That's a bit boring. Or it could be six and a 10. That's a bit more interesting. So there's more than one way you could do it. So that's 16 written as two triangles. A number like 17 takes three triangles. So it might be 10, six, and one, or it might be 15, one, and one would make 17. So 17 needs three triangles. It can't be done better. So some numbers do need three triangles. Some numbers need two triangles. Some numbers need one triangle. There are no numbers that need four triangles though. That's the idea. So that is not easy to prove. So this is something that Gauss proved. The proof is long. The proof is long. It involves a lot of algebra, a lot of number theory. It's like a, it's like a chapter of a textbook. He wrote a textbook and it was a chapter of his book, which ended with this Eureka theorem. So it's not an easy thing to prove. So I'm just saying it as a fact because it's a nice mathematical fact as well. But Shall we try and go even further? Yeah. Okay, so we can write numbers as three triangles. What about squares? So we could have a sequence of squares. So one is a square number, four is a square number, nine is a square number, 16 is a square number, 25 is a square number. How many squares do we need to write every number? Okay, well, this is actually proven first. This was actually proven before Gauss, like 20 years before Gauss proved his triangular numbers. Uh, so I guess it's not easy, but it was easier to prove. And we actually proved you can write every number, every positive whole number, uh, with at most four squares. I'm gonna do 25, because this is a nice one to start with. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five. I'm gonna do five rows of five. That'll be a nice square, five. Okay, so 25 is a square number, which, which means it, it needs one square, right? So it only needs one square, that's fine. 26 needs two squares, right? 25 and one. 27 needs three squares. It could be 25, one and one, bit boring. It could be nine, nine and nine. 28 needs four squares. So it could be 25, one, one, and one, or it could be nine, 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 and a one. So again, some numbers need four squares. Some can be done better, but there are no numbers that need five squares. So this actually goes back to Fermat. Fermat was stating these ideas. So every number can be written as four squares. Every number can be written as three triangles. Right? He stated this without proof, typical, just like Fermat would. It's because of those thin margins. Yes, oh, so there's all oh, those poor margins. <laughs> so what about going even further? 
Can we do pentagons? Is there such a thing as a pentagon number or a hexagon number? Yes, there is. Uh, I'm going to have to show you this because I can't actually do them. They're really difficult to draw. You told me triangles was three and squares was four. Mm. It'd be too good to be true if you need five pentagons to make every... Is that, your, is that your conjecture? That's my conjecture. Is that your conjecture? That was the same as Fermat's conjecture as well. So let's just have a look at what a, a pentagon and a hexagon number looks like. So they kind of do look like pentagons and hexagons. They start with one. First pentagon number, you can see, looks a bit like a pentagon with five tokens there. And then we build bigger pentagons by sort of adding a layer each time. Same for the hexagon numbers. We start with a one. The first hexagon number is a six makes a little hexagon shape. And then we make bigger hexagons by adding extra layers each time. So we get this sequence of pentagon numbers, sequence of hexagon numbers. So Brady, you've got a conjecture, right? Every number can be written with at most five pentagons, at most six. Yeah, so that's what Fermat thought as well. And it keeps going, right? In general, he thought every positive whole number can be written at, with at most n, n-gonal numbers. All right, that was proven too. So that was proven, what, another 15 years after Gauss proved his result? So you're telling me that the fermat Haran conjecture yes. was proven to be true? It was proven to be true. Yeah. Proven to be true by a mathematician called Cauchy. Again, it's another long, difficult proof. However, the modern proof is three pages long, using only Gauss's Eureka theorem. So if you can use Gauss's Eureka theorem, so take Gauss's work, use that work. From there, you can prove this in general, that every positive whole number can be written with n n-gonal numbers. Lovely stuff. Right, do you want me to tell you more I mean, I, I, I proved it was zero pages, I just told oh, you. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, well, that's a, that's a conjecture, I think. Okay, I right. feel like it's a conjecture. They're easier. Can we go further, Brady? Can we get, what is even further? How can we go further? How about tetrahedral numbers? Tetrahedral numbers are numbers that make a tetrahedron, which means if I had balls or oranges or something and stacked them into a sort of triangular-based pyramid, a tetrahedron, how many oranges balls do I need? So one starts off the sequence, then we have four, so we have three on the base and then another one on top, then the next tetrahedron is 10, then the next one is 20 and 35, we get a sequence of tetrahedral numbers. How many tetrahedral numbers do we need to write every number? What's Brady's conjecture on that one? 2n. 2n. So n being the number itself, what is n? So if tetrahedron is like a, what, a four-sided yeah. solid, your conjecture oh, is? Oh, because there's, oh, okay. If it's a four-sided solid, it would be, yeah, 2n. So you're saying eight. Is that your conjecture? Yes. <laughs> yeah, yes. it is now. Yes. It is now. Okay, this is a conjecture, right? It does have a name. It's called Pollock's conjecture. I said Pollock's. You hear me quite distinctly. Pollock's conjecture says that every whole number can be written with at most five tetrahedral numbers. And that appears to be true, but we haven't proven it. So that is an unproven statement. It appears to be true because it's true for every number we've checked so far. How high have we checked? I'm not sure, but I'm thinking I would imagine it's in the billions. So it's, you know, we've checked them. It appears to be true. Uh, but it hasn't been proven yet. I mean, the biggest number that needs five tetrahedrons is 343,867, right? So there might be some huge one out there that we haven't found. What appears to be the case, though, is that when these numbers get bigger, it actually gets easier to write them as a sum of tetrahedrons. So the bigger numbers are being written as four tetrahedrons, three, two, one, so that is not in the great scheme of things, that's not a huge number. So But there could but there could be another one lurking. If there was another one lurking, 
amazing, great, cool, and I'll come on number five and I will tell you about it. That would be amazing. But it appears like this is getting easier with bigger numbers. So this is just evidence that perhaps this statement is true because we know some numbers need five tetrahedrons, but it appears to be getting easier after this. So five is the conjecture. We have proven that every number can be written as a sum of nine cubes, but five tetrahedrons, we haven't proven that one yet. We'd like to thank Jane Street for supporting this video and they've created yet another fiendish puzzle to test your metal. Have a look at this one, it's called Bug Bite. I'll include a link to it in the video description. Give it a try, let me know how you get on. There's no cost, no strings attached, it's just something they've made for fun. But while you're on the Jane Street website, you might want to check out their programs and events. Here's where you'll find them, again there'll be a link in the description. These are fantastic opportunities for all sorts of people. High school students, undergraduates, postgraduates, PhDs, you name it. Whoever you are, there's probably a program just for you. And for people from all kinds of backgrounds too. Go and have a look at the website. This is a chance to learn how companies like Jane Street work, how they use computers and problem solving to trade on the markets. This could be a once in a lifetime opportunity and the start of something really special for your career. Links down in the description, check it all out. And don't forget to have a look at that bug bite puzzle and let me know how you go. So you might be tempted to try and prove these theorems for yourselves or these conjectures for yourself. And you, oh, go ahead, go for it, get into the algebra, why not? Play around with the numbers. I mean, I'm expecting the proofs to be hard, uh, but you're more than welcome to try, out, try it out because the point is, what you discover along the way. Even if you don't prove it, don't be disappointed. It is about the things you learn along the way as well. So have at it. <laughs>